This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Golf's final major of the year is coming up this week. It is the Open Championship at Royal Troon's Old Course. We're going to break down today the top bets at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Open Championship by talking to Brandon Gadula, picking his brain on the course, picking his brain on the favorites this week, and his favorite bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis, and I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on X at Gadula. 13 find his work at fan duel research where he is a senior managing editor brandon the open championship is coming up this week how are you doing today i'm good like the open like having some golf to wake up to uh probably gonna set the alarm early uh i tend to watch all sports on dvr though so i tend to play catch up and then i can't be on social media which isn't really a huge issue for me I was say. uh <laughs> Isn't that like a perk for you? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a nice like byproduct of it. But boy, sports on DVR is the way to be. Uh, so I'm looking forward to having some stuff to wake up to, and yeah. hopefully we get a good read on things and have some some interest. But you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. There's always something about the Open that it just feels so different than PGA Tour golf, which is awesome. Yeah. And then there's also the like. The knowing that this is the final major for the men and i mean I, we all love the fedex cup playoffs and everything but sure something about a major just feels a little different it definitely does and there are a lot of good storylines entering this week too we got scotty scheffler of course rory mcelroy trying to bounce back seeing if bryson dechambeau can grab a second major for this year is john rom gonna be relevant can xander get a second major so a lot of good storylines now you mentioned waking up to golf i know in the past i have peddled the narrative that i like the open because i can wake up and check scores i've shifted that brandon uh, i do like that part still but the reason that the open is so good is that three balls for the next round get posted like at 5 p.m eastern or so so like as opposed to like refreshing my phone at i don't or like while I'm watching netflix or whatever at 10 o'clock at night i can just like pull up data golf at five o'clock and be like oh they're already posted and i can just do them now so probably this is a mentality shift because i just like three balls a lot but like i've realized that that's actually the big reason to love the open championship not because i can wake up and check scores Hey man, you do you. I like watching golf. That's that's different and challenging. And uh, if there's wind, this will be challenging. And you know, if not, maybe it'll be a little easier. But we'll we'll find out. Yeah, wind speeds currently looking at they're around between 10 and 15 miles per hour. Slight edge for golfers with a later tee time Thursday, earlier Friday. It's not a massive edge by any means, but a slight edge there. So it looks like it'll be a bit more scorable because it's not outrageous win by any means for this week. We'll talk about what that means. We'll talk about the course, talk about Brandon's top bets and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We're talking about the biggest events in the sporting calendar right here on this podcast feed throughout the rest of the summer to get those shows as they are posted. Just search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts hit subscribe and if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating and review as well and of course you can find the show on fanduel tv plus go to fanduel.com slash watch for that as well the dog days are here and the coolest place to get in on the mlb action is fanduel america's number one sports book because this summer fanduel's hooking up all customers with a booster a bonus daily that's right there is something for everyone every day all summer long you can score bigger winnings many in with profit boosts say bonus bets for home runs on a typical tuesday got some bonus uh profit boost for tonight for the all-star game two no sweat bets out there as well so head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer FanDuel official sports betting partner of major league baseball must be 18 plus in dc and 21 plus in president select states opt-in required wager requirements apply bonuses awarded as non travel bonus bets or profit boost tokens Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER 
or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat, Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or... Call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Brandon, let's start things off here by talking about the course. This year's Open Championship is at the old course at Royal Troon. This will be the old course's 10th time hosting an Open Championship. What should we know about this course for this week? I wish I knew a little bit more, but we'll do with what we can kind of work with which isn't a whole lot i mean shot link data and the the open championship don't have a lot of history we've got two uh open championships with shot link data and so even though we had an open at royal troon as recently as 2016 we don't have shot link data for it um the open was also here in 2004 and 1997 but even like some basic stats are kind of missing from from some of these so it's a little bit unfortunate, but we can kind of extrapolate and, and do our best from here. First, though, I'll just kind of give like a brief overview of maybe the winners and kind of how that might put like a picture in our minds first. But uh, in 2016, Troon hosted one of the more memorable uh, majors in, in recent history with, with Henrik Stenson and Phil Mickelson going head to head with Stenson winning at 20 under. <laughs> Uh, and Mickelson was 17 under, but nobody else was better than six under. So Mickelson cleared the field by uh, 11 shots, but could not fend off Henrik Stenson. Uh, and then in 20, uh, or sorry, 2004, Todd Hamilton beat Ernie Els in a playoff. Um, not really what you'd expect, but, and then in, in uh, 1997, Justin Leonard won by three shots at minus 12. So Kind of one of the reasons that I brought that up was we've seen a winning score of uh, 20 under, um, 10 under, and 12 under. But, you know, it, the 20 under, a bit of an outlier. It's, it's the record here. We're probably looking more at like 10 to 12 under, maybe a little bit deeper than that just because the game's changed. However, to combat some of that, Troon has added uh, like roughly 100 and 80 yards or so uh, to how this played back in uh, 2016. And so what, like one of the best things we can kind of do is look at like a hole by hole breakdown and you do see a mix of long and, and short holes. There's the, the famous postage stamp uh, par three uh, number eight, the green there is like 2,600 square feet and sort of average for the PGA tour is 6,000 square feet. I don't have any data on whether or just what the average average uh, size for the green is here. Don't have a lot of data on this course at all, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. But there are three sub 400 yard par four. So it's going to be kind of gettable in that sense. But where the added length really is going to rear its head is with some of the other holes. They're just basically every hole other than like those four short ones is average for par were noticeably longer there are two long par threes over 220 there's a pair of 500 yard par four so basically if you're kind of keeping track of all that there's going to be some precision in mind especially for the postage stamp hole just some of these smaller greens they do look a little bit smaller but i'm really bad at estimating things like that without just the data behind it um so don't hold me to that but added distance is going to help but frankly, this is a major. And if you dig back into other uh, open championships, you'll kind of just see that it's a lot of an all around test. And so you don't see iron play weighted as heavily as normal to a degree, but it's still one of the most important, if not the most important stats uh, for the week. Strokes it off the tee, whether it's distance or accuracy, but um, it probably leans a little bit more distance. But, you know, I'm kind of just wanting my golfers to be able to hit the ball 
well off the tee as measured by strokes gained off the tee. And then frankly, you got to have a good short game too. Uh, a lot of long made putts here. If you go back and watch some of the, some of the footage from any of these uh, final rounds that, that you have access to um, up on YouTube, you can just kind of search around a lot of made putts. Seems like it's a relatively easy, I don't want to say easy, but like a lot of long made putts. It feels like, uh, which is kind of something like Stenson, was doing a lot whenever he just did not fade. So with that in mind, yeah, course going to be interesting, going to play different. How does that impact things? I'm looking for more all around golfers this week. Want a good sort of stroke skiing archetype of kind of doing a little bit of everything, but in the same breath, it's a major. And that's kind of my process anyway, because the better golfers tend to separate at majors. Now, you mentioned the long putts being made, and when we talk over on the Heat Check, our, our weekly PGA show, you talk a lot about how the shorter putts are most predictable within 15 feet. That's going to stabilize more quickly and be a better indicator of how good you are as a putter. Are you putting any stock in lag putting longer putts for this week, or do you think that's going to lead you down a potentially misleading path, given that data is going to be tougher to trust going forward? Um, so it's a little bit tougher to trust. Also, I'm working off of like adjusted make percentages, mm -hmm. not necessarily specifically strokes gained just because it yeah. doesn't exist, um, at least in most places. So I'm not putting a lot of emphasis on lag putting uh, this week. I think that you can try to implement that if you'd like. But for me, especially with some, of, again, the greens look kind of small as I just poke around a little bit. But I'm one of the worst people at estimating how far something is. That's why I'm a, a, I need a range finder no matter where I am on the golf course. I can be 40 yards out and need to, need to, need to gun it. So I have an idea. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, I'm not emphasizing any real stats over the other. It's a major, everything matters this week. Overall play makes a lot of sense. Okay. So let's talk here about the odds of FanDuel Sportsbook where Scotty Scheffler is a favorite and actually, a bit longer than he's been recently. I know that's wild to say, considering he's plus 450, but like that's kind of the reality of where things are. So Scotty did have a couple of events where the putter escaped him, but then won the Travelers after that. So what do your simulations say about Scotty relative to the plus 450 number he's at right now? Yeah, he's really hard to pin down. Hasn't played in basically a month uh, since he bounced back and won the Travelers after a T41 at the US Open. And that T41 at the U.S. Open came with really bad putting, and then he bounced back and gained strokes putting, which if you pull up uh, you know, his data golf profile page, pretty much since the Genesis, yes, yeah, so not pretty much, since the Genesis, so after, like, after the Genesis and then starting with his win at the Arnold Palmer, uh, that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 thankfully it's 10 because that's 40 categories across the four strokes gain stats he's gained in 39 of those the only one or sorry sorry 38 he lost barely uh around the green at memorial when he still won and then he had a really bad putting week so 38 out of 40 possible categories in that span uh he's gained strokes on the field which does adjust for field strength too um for, you know data golf but it's really hard to knock that now my model system does weight in recency. So there's a little bit of a downgrade for Scheffler. He's actually kind of rating out around six to one for me this week. Part of that is, you know, his layoff, but part of it is there's some other good golfers kind of playing really well. There's kind of a class of like Rory's playing really well. Xander's playing really well. Morikawa, uh, Ludwig, Bryson, a lot of golfers in pretty good form. That's finally starting to impact Scheffler a bit in my model. So I'm not quite there at plus 450. However, he's got what? Like two, he's got six wins in those 10 events. Like at a, at a certain point that the math is going to be, it's never going to quite show him as a value at such a short number almost. And we've talked a lot about how sometimes at like five to one plus five fifty plus six hundred, like he is kind of a value. I don't quite see it that way this week. However, none of that is to say like if you like Scotty at plus four fifty, I mean, we're talking all around golf. I just laid out the reason I laid out the thirty eight out of forty stats is because 
he is the pinnacle of an all around golfer. And, you know, I think that eventually he's going to get, he's got to get another major. That's not yeah. a master's. I don't know if it's this week. There's a lot of interesting storylines, like you said. So that's kind of where I am with Scotty have a little more interest in, in some other names at the top. So let's talk about those names. Let's focus primarily on the quote unquote, non Scotty favorites for this week. Any outrights there where you do see value for this week? So I did like Xander, uh, but he shortened from 12 to 11. So I can't quite get there at this point. I like to call him more a who who does have an open championship victory, but he shortened from 16 to 14. One name that didn't shorten uh, that I have interest in is Ludwig Ober at 16 to one. He is really, really interesting. I don't think we're going to be alone in this. However, I just laid out some other movement, other shortening odds there. Uh, Ludwig not seeing that as of Tuesday morning, nearly got a big win at the Genesis Scottish open finished T four. I think the slow play really got to him. Uh, I'm not going to make excuses for it, but I think he sets up really well as one of these second tier favorites in what's actually going to be his first open championship start. And he's just making his like debuts at these majors, but I uh, was solo second at the masters did miss the cut at the PGA championship, but was uh, T 12 at the U S open. So like the two harder ones, he was top 12. Uh, he, he is a uh, top 13 in three of the four strokes gain stats over the last 50 rounds, according to data golf's adjusted strokes gain numbers. Uh, he is sixth off the tee, 10th in approach and 13th in putting the around the green play is the concern. He's actually lost strokes around the green in all three of the majors that he's played this year. He's 64th over the last 50 rounds in that stat, but He's gaining everywhere else, and he showed me enough last week to get me uh, to want to be there on Ludwig. So he, I think he has that all-around game at sixteen to one. That if I'm at these current numbers here, if I'm if I have to pick one, I feel good with Ludwig. So you know what the question will be because we have, we're on Xander for a very long time. People are like, oh, we can't <laughs> win on Sunday. Yeah, Ludwig. That question has already come up, which I think is kind of nuts, honestly, given he hasn't had a lot of chances to puke it away on Sunday and like it happens like that's kind of how golf is i think he was around even money to win entering sunday which means half the time he doesn't win and he happened to fall on that half so i feel like there aren't any concerns there personally but it sounds like and it sounds like you're on the same page yeah i think that's it's the lebron james in the finals sort of narrative it's like you can't you can't point out a losing record in the finals to sort of prove that someone's not good right like you're also a choke artist until you aren't and like, yeah, that's just how it goes. Like, I, I don't know. I just I think it's a little too soon to like raise those concerns for him. Yeah. And you're golfing against. Like, even on just su- Sunday, call it like five to six other golfers. That is like if you're just like there's enough variance in that. So, no, I'm not worried about it. Okay. And I think the fact that we're talking about this for him in his fourth major start is telling you. <laughs> All you need to know. And I frankly, I would rather be the guy who's like, oh, he's only finished top 12 in two of his first three majors. Like, can he really do it? I'd rather be that guy than nobody cares because you're always missing the cut or you're just down at the bottom of the leaderboard on Sunday. Does he have more top tens in majors than Tyrrell? Like, um, what's Tyrrell Hatton? To... Let me check this out here. Uh, okay. So Ludwig. In majors, uh, I've got the re- the re- Renaissance Club still pulled up. Whatever, that's gonna take way too long for me to figure out. Anyway, disregard that. But he's been awesome, and I'm not concerned about that just yet. No, Hatton Hatton has six top tens. Okay, so Lindsay will be there next year, is what you're saying? Sure, he'll catch up to him next year. Okay, so we like Obear at uh, sixteen to one to win the Open Championship. Any other outrights you're eyeing for this weekend? Going back to the lad, Tommy Fleetwood, uh, twenty five to one. You want an all-around game. That's what Tommy Fleetwood does. He also plays well in majors. He plays well in opens in particular, um, or he also plays well in opens, not saying like it's necessarily his strongest major or not. But he was T12 at the 2018 Open Championship, finished that up, uh, or followed that up, sorry, with a, a second, 33rd, 4th, and 10th. He's in good form right now, 11 straight made cuts. He's been top 26 or better in all three of the the majors this year. Third at the Masters, 26th at the PGA, 16th at the U.S. Open. Again, you want an all-around game. 
that's one of the that's one of the things usually that draws me away from Fleetwood and most like PGA Tour setups is like okay you have to be really long off the tee or you have to be like the best iron player or it's a putting contest. He doesn't really play golf that way, so I think that this is one of the best situations you're going to get Fleetwood in. The form's there, the numbers right uh, for me with Fleetwood at twenty five to one. Okay, so Tommy Fleetwood, 25 to 1. Brandon is going there. Again, advantage for Fleetwood, not in the U.S. soil, so he's allowed to win. Any other outrights for you this week? I do have interest in Tom Kim. Okay. Uh, at 50 to 1, but I might just sort of move him. Yeah, No, I'm going to go with Tom Kim. I'll, I'll stick with him as an outright. Very strongly consider him to, just top 10 as well at, at plus 400, but if we're going Ludwig, if you're not going Scotty, you have a little flexibility. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're going Ludwig and... You know, it's Andrew and more cow shortening. If you don't really jam in Bryson as well, uh, you have some flexibility here. So Tom Kim, 50 to one. He was T2 at the Open last year, T47 in his first ever Open Championship. And I'm not saying the Genesis Scottish Open is like the best and only comp or anything, but he's played well there. Third, sixth, and T15 for him uh, in his three starts at the Genesis Scottish Open. I'll take that. He's another type of golfer who, if you really look at his profile, there's not one thing you really look at with Tom Kim and say, this is a Tom Kim week. At times, he feels like he's one of the best iron players in the world. At times, it feels like he's one of the best putters in the world. I mean, he is like more accurate, I guess, than other golfers, but it's not like he hits every single fairway always. That's not really how I view him. Uh, but over the last 50 rounds... He is 35th in strokes gained approach. Over the last 20 rounds, he's 11th in that stat. Uh, and he's gained strokes from approach in four of his last five events. And he's also been pretty solid uh, in majors when it comes to iron play. He's gained strokes with his uh, approach play in each of the last eight majors he's played in. So again, one of those golfers who doesn't have everything, or sorry, he ha like, like has everything, doesn't have any one individual stat that I point to. Tom Kim 50 to one or maybe top 10. I get that. Um, but yeah, he's, he's someone I have a lot of interest in with what he's shown at similar setups. So Tom Kim 50 to one to win or top 10, uh, four to one could also put a bit on the top 10 and a bit on the outright too. If you want some upside there, Tommy Fleetwood to win 25 to one and Ludwig O'Bear 16 to one. What about non outrights in addition to Tom Kim top 10, where else is he in value there at FanDuel Sportsbook? So it's hard to look at, I don't know. And I've, we've seen this comp more and more. I feel like I, I noticed it as well. Uh, someone who plays like Jordan Spieth and Jordan Spieth plays opens very well. Uh, Sahith Thagala just reminds me of Spieth with sure statistically, but also just kind of mannerisms and, and emotion. And so I like Sahith to finish top 20 at plus 220. He's 65 to one to win outright. I'm more than okay with a partial unit there because he can definitely get hot. And he's another one of those golfers who maybe you feel like, okay, can he actually really do it when the lights are brightest, like more often than not that's because he's getting into position already. Uh, but he's plus two twenty to finish uh, top 20 missed the cut at the open last year. Sure. But in his debut in 2022 at the open was T 34 uh, he's coming off of a T4 at the Genesis Scottish Open. Did gain a lot of strokes around the green, but he can kind of do that even though his long-term profile doesn't necessarily do it. Like it's it's kind of that speed comp where I'm not surprised if he chips in twice in a round or something like that. So, you know, usually I advocate against buying in on a lot of short game, but there's more to it for him. And he's actually played the the majors pretty well t45 at the master t12 at the pga and t32 at the us open so sure the the 65 to 1 outright is really enticing you could maybe say oh top 10 but with those finishes with you know an imperfect game a top 20 is more of where i want to be and he's actually made the cut in uh, seven of his last eight majors missing you know coincidentally just at the at the open last year um when the irons weren't they were just like ice cold uh, for him and he's top 20 in strokes gained off the tee and putting this week, which are two really good baseline stats to have uh, factored in. So I like him top 20 this week. That's Sahih Thigala again, top 20, plus 220 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other non-outrights catching your eye right now? Yeah, you got to scroll all the way one name down. 
to oh. Aaron Rye. Oh, plus baby, let's go. Uh, qualifying he, for this event last week. Hop right in to, to finish top 20. Let's ride. He's golfing let's so ride. well. Okay. You get it? All right. You get yeah, it? I got it. Okay. Right, cool. Yeah. Just got to make sure. Uh, T4 at the Genesis Scottish Open last week. T7 at John Deere. T, uh, T2 Rocket Mortgage. Um, now has five straight top 20s and eight straight made cuts for him. And he's also done pretty well at majors. He didn't play. Uh, the Masters, but was top 20 at the U.S. Open with a T19. T39 at the PGA Championship. So, again, not trying to get out over the skis here. Uh, but a top 20 makes a lot of sense with how good his just numbers are. He is 20th in approach, 33rd around the green, and 27th in putting over the last 50 rounds. The putting for Rye, we talked about, you, know, you kind of just alluded to briefly, the putting regression stuff that I try to look at. He was one of the best candidates for that. He's starting to make more putts. That is just put that with one of the better T to frankly, like sincerely one of the better T to green games that exists uh, in pro golf for the men and then have putting regression hit. It's really appealing to me with Aaron Rye. Yeah, again, Rye is uh, two, plus 220 to finish inside the top 20 for this week. Again, Aaron Rye and Saith the Gala, those two top 20s, Brandon is on for the Open Championship. Any final bets you want to recommend before we close up shot for today? You know I got to do a top in region. Let's do it. Wait, can I guess the region? Oh, please do. All right. Um, ooh, I can't do top African because got both Bazadenho and West Hazen there, and I feel like both those guys are gonna be intriguing to you. So it's not that. Yes. Um, not top Asian. Uh, Decky plus three fifty isn't bad. Um, Canadian, no. Um, no. Oh, um, let's see here. I'm uh, continental European. No. All right. I got nothing. I thought I could do this. I thought I could. I thought I could. Uh, I thought I could pin you down, but I've got nothing unless is our guy. Mateo, is he in the field again? Yes, that, that mark. He was in the top. Hit. He was in the top like 10 last week at one point, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, he was playing. He's playing well. So I had two. One was for top Dane, Rasmus Hoygaard, shortened too much. Uh, he was plus 190. I had him around like plus 178 or so. He's now plus 170. So I don't, I don't hate it, but um, the one I'm going to go with is top German. Oh. Steven Yeager. All oh, right. Plus 170. I thought maybe you get there because yeah. we're kind of, you know, Yeager popped or... a bit last week. Didn't get on him. Uh, it was a lot. Might have been a couple weeks ago. Didn't get on him, but I, I think this makes sense. I, when I saw Alex Cheka's like name on my sheet this week, I was like the, it was the um, Obi-Wan meme of, ah, oh, it's a name I've not heard in a while. <laughs> yeah. So like Jaeger's current form is not, as great as you'd want it. He's losing a lot of strokes putting. It just kind of is what it is there. But whenever you compare him to the rest of this group, he just stands out over the last 12 months. He's at a 0.68 true show scheme per round, according to data golf. So 0.68 over the last 12 months, uh, Yannick Paul's 0.15 is the only other mark positive over the last calendar year. And over the last 50 rounds, Jaeger's at a 0.49. The other three are negative. So just based on that, it kind of ch like checks out. But I, I simulated this one out. I have Jaeger around plus 135 here. So I know the form's not great. I know the putting is going cold. Um, but plus 170, you know I got to get me a, a top end region. And this is the one that stands out to me most. I think that makes a lot of sense. I should have known that. That's on me. Uh, so I left people down. I'm sorry for failing you in this quest. But Brandon is on. Steven Yeager, top German, plus 170. Aaron Ryan, Sahith the Gala, top 20, both at plus 220. In the outrights, Tom Kim, 50 to 1. Tommy Fleetwood, 25. Ludwig Gobert at 16 to 1. Tom Kim, top 10 at 4 to 1 as well. 
That's all we have here for today and for this week on Covering the Spread. But Brandon, first of all, I want to give a big thank you for uh, swinging by for today. People find Brandon on X at Cadula 13. But Brandon, enjoy your DVR golf. Enjoy the golf in general. Good luck to you. We'll talk to you once again this afternoon to break down things more in depth on the heat check as well. Thanks for having me. All right, you can find the Heat Check Podcast by searching for a FanDuel Research Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. As mentioned, Brandon is on X at Cadula 13. I am on X at Jim Saunas. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets to the Open Championship. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research Podcast. 